I usually say I am Navajo, but honestly, my mother is Navajo and my father is a mix of European background, mostly German and some other things, but um, I really do identify myself as being Navajo. I grew up on the western part of Arizona in a small town called Kingman, which is not near the Navajo Reservation. My family's from the western edge of New Mexico, so it was a little ways away. We used to go over to the res um, in the summers and for holidays and so forth. There were opportunities to participate in like family occasions that probably were more cultural than I realized, you know, weddings and so forth. Where my grandmother and my, my relatives lived, there was a lot of stuff to go exploring, and so as kids we just went all over the place. I would go over for a couple weeks by myself and just stay with my grandparents, and that was always interesting. Um, I think one of the things that was the most interesting was I they took us to a vacation Bible school that was run by a group of high school students from Mississippi, and just the way they treated the, the native kids at this v VBS, was, I look back on it and I think, oh my goodness. Very condescending, very sort of, you know, we're here because, you know, you just are maybe not quite where you need to be. It was very condescending. My grandmother, an amazing woman, she grew up, of course, when you did get pulled from your family and you had to go to the boarding school. She had kind of a rough not just growing up, but marriage and so forth, and yet just the most loving, and, and she should have been bitter, but she was far from bitter, so just, just really incredible. I had two brothers, and so lots of sports, lots and lots of sports. I played a little bit with dolls, but mostly was out playing football and baseball and basketball with the, the kids in the neighborhood. I liked to read, math was my favorite subject. My dad's a math teacher. He was a high school math teacher. He actually really pushed hard when I was in high school for me to take four years of math. But other than that, I didn't have any particular interest in science. There wasn't really a, a person that was helping or pushing or, or getting you interested. So it wasn't until college that I finally, you know, kind of saw the light. <laughs> I was a, a jock, so I played three sports in high school, and so I really wanted to continue that on, and it turned out I got an opportunity to play at um, a junior college. And that, I think, was actually a big turning point. Not only did I get an opportunity to play sports, but I had an incredible chemistry teacher. He was really the reason I'm a, I'm a chemist, because he made it so interesting. He actually was married to a Navajo woman, so he would bring in some of the, you know, a little bit more traditional knowledge that I'm sure m most students don't get exposed to. But I think the big thing is he just got to know you as a student. So I remember going into his office at the beginning telling him, I need to take the easier chemistry. This is just too hard. And he's like, no, you're not. <laughs> you're not doing that. And I mean, to just have someone, you know, say, you can do this and work through problems, that made a huge difference. When I was in college, I made a, a conscious decision that I did want a family. That was part of the reason why I did not go the academic route at the beginning. So I went into the Department of Energy Labs where I was just doing research and didn't have the teaching load to go with it. And I had my three kids when I was working for the DOE Labs. After being at the DOE Lab for about 11 years, just decided I really liked interacting with the students we'd have in the summer and some of the junior, fac or junior staff members and wanted to try the academic route. Most of my students are Native American, a lot of Navajo students. A big part of my work is done on the reservation, actually. We're looking at um, the exposure of uranium to the people in, in, on the Navajo reservation. And so um, it's an issue that the Navajos are really interested in. We're working with the um, Arizona Cancer Center to see if there's a potential for uranium, environmental uranium, to cause cancer in folks. And I think it helps a lot the fact that I'm a tribal member, my students are tribal members, because we're going to the communities and asking for their help in doing this research. I mean, they have to sort of open up their doors to us to get information, to collect samples and so forth. And I think um, it would be difficult for another researcher to do, quite honestly. I think it makes 
a wonderful impact, the fact that we're there. It's more than just trying to get papers out. I mean, we really are trying to understand what's going on. Now where I live in Flagstaff, Arizona, which is a border town to the Navajo Reservation, I feel like I have a connection better than when I've lived in other parts of the country. Um, so it, it's actually pretty exciting, um, particularly being in a place like Flagstaff because there are a lot of um, not just Navajo people, but Hopi people and other tribes. And I've learned a lot more since sort of moving back, maybe because I'm older and I have more interest and, and ask more questions. It's pretty cool, actually, I really, I, m more now than I guess at any point in my life.